This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Not, but in the gross and scope of my opinion, this bodes some strange eruption to our state. Good now, sit down and tell me he that knows why this same strict and most observant watch so nightly toils the subject of the land, and why such daily cast a brazen cannon and foreign mart for implements of war. Why such impress of shipwrights whose sore task does not divide the Sunday from the week? What might be toward that this sweaty haste doth make the night joint labourer with the day? Who is that can inform me? That can I. At least the whisper goes so. Our last king, whose image even but now appeared to us, was, as you know, by Fortinbras of Norway, thereto pricked on by a most emulate pride, dared to the combat, in which our valiant Hamlet for so this side of our known world esteemed him, did slay this Fortinbras, who by a sealed compact, well ratified by law and heraldry, did forfeit with his life all those his lands which he stood seized of to the conqueror, against the which a moiety competent was gated by our king, which had returned to the inheritance of Fortinbras, had he been vanquisher, as by the same comart and carriage of the article designed, his fell to Hamlet. Now, sir, young Fortinbras, of unimproved metal, hot and full, hath in the skirts of Norway here and there sharked up a list of lawless resolutes for food and diet to some enterprise that hath a stomach in it, which is no other, as it doth well appear unto our state, but to recover of us by strong hand and terms compulsatory those foresaid lands so by his father lost. And this, I take it, is the main motive of our preparations, the source of this hour watch, and the chief head of this post-haste and rummage in the land. I think it be no other but e'en so. Well may it sort that this portentous figure comes armed through our watch so like the king that was and is the question of these wars. A moat it is to trouble the mind's eye. In the most high and palmy state of Rome, a little ere the mightiest Julius fell, the graves stood tenantless, and the sheeted dead did squeak and gibber in the Roman streets. As stars with trains of fire and dews of blood, disasters in the sun, and the moist star upon whose influence Neptune's empire stands was sick almost to doomsday with eclipse. And even the like precursor of feared events, as harbingers preceding still the fates and prologue to the omen coming on, have heaven and earth together demonstrated unto our climatures and countrymen. Oh, it's soft to behold low where it comes again. I'll cross it though it blast me. Stay, illusion. If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done that may to thee do ease and grace to me, speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily for knowing may avoid, oh, speak! For if thou hast abhorred in thy life extorted treasure in the womb of earth, for which they say you spirits oft walk in death, speak of it! Stay and speak! Stop it, Marcellus! Shall I strike at it with my partisan? Do if it will not stand! It is here! It is here! It is gone! Do it wrong, being so majestical to offer it the show of violence. For it is as the air invulnerable, and our vein blows malicious mockery. It was about to speak when the cock crew. And then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. I have heard the cock that is the trumpet to the morn doth with his lofty and shrill sounding throat awake the god of day. And at his warning, whether in sea or fire, in earth or air, the extravagant and erring spirit hies to his confine, and of the truth herein, this present object made probation. It faded on the crowing of the cock. Some say that ever against that season comes wherein our Saviour's birth is celebrated, this bird of dawning singeth all night long, and then they say no spirit dare stir abroad. The nights are wholesome, then no planet strike, no fairy takes, nor witch hath power to charm. So hallowed and so gracious is that time. So have I heard, and do in part believe it. But look, the morn in russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew of yon high eastward hill. Break we our watch up, and by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, 
This spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Do you consent we shall acquaint him with it as needful in our loves, fitting our duty?